Hey, it's Anfa. Today I'm gonna show you how to make that interesting psychedelic voice-like lead instrument that sounds like this. Actually, we're gonna make the whole track from scratch. But first we need to make a basic beat and bass. No worries, I'm gonna do it quick. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is a kick drum. Actually, I'm going to use the new Gian Kick version to make all the drums and a single MIDI track. It's gonna be easier to program. And yes, let's configure it for fan output and 16 channels. And at first we might not use it, but then we might use it. So this gives us 16 drum instruments that are already rooted to their own respective buses. Now I'm going to give it input from my keyboard. And uh, let's, let's see. Okay, so this is gonna be the kick. Let's also go to the kit. And the kit is gonna be channel output number one. Yes, so this is first audio channel, right? And uh, let's give it a or which one, which is it? All right, so I have it there. Cool. All right, let's make this kick uh, very quick, pun intended. Let's make the oscillator, let's make this louder. Let's give it a bit more frequency to start with. Okay, let's go oscillator frequency, yes. And we're starting with 1.8K, that's cool. Let's go ramp down to, let's maybe go with G. We don't wanna go below these 47 Hertz then. Maybe slightly above. Okay. Alrighty, um, now for the envelope. Uh, sorry, the amplitude envelope. I don't want it to be as loud. I'm sorry, as long. Let's also make it louder. I'm missing some of that very high frequency click at the start. So you know what, let's turn up the frequency even more. And now we need to, of course, manually correct the frequency of our lower part. Oh, nice, that's clicky. That's very clicky, nice. We can also spice it up with some distortion. I'm gonna reduce the input gain and max out the volume instead. Alrighty. Now I'm gonna use the general amplitude envelope. Max out the basic volume and reduce it. So we have like a, like a distorted transient and then it's a bit more clean. Yeah, I think that's gonna be good. That sounds like a pretty fat kick, uh, but it's also very like sterile and that's what we need for this kind of track. Now let's go to the kit settings. Let's create an entirely new part. I'm gonna call this the kick and the second one I'm gonna call it hi-hat. Later we may add a, so this is gonna be, okay, maybe not, maybe I'm gonna go stage on B. It's gonna be easier for me to play. And I want this to be on the audio channel two. So now you can see when I play the kick, it plays on this channel. When I play the hi-hat, it plays on that channel. Actually, you know what, let's, no, let's add another one and make a room for, um, I believe there's an option to move them up and down. Or isn't there? Maybe there isn't. Okay, let's call this snare then. And make it like that. So this hi hat's gonna be the third one. So we have kick, it's gonna be snare, and it's gonna be hi-hat. So this this channel. Okay, this channel one and this is channel two but they count from zero 
it's a bit counterintuitive. All right, so let's make this, this is going to be the snare. Um, I don't want to do this right now, so I want to focus on the hi-hat. So let's make the hi-hat. Maybe we'll do the snare, but it's not necessary. <laughs> Spoilers. I never did the snare! Let's use two oscillators, FM them together. Let's make it two triangle waves. Make them very loud. Make the frequencies vastly different. Okay, maybe not as loud, the second one. Now the amplitude envelope for the oscillator 2, which is the result. Uh. Okay, now I'm going to also bandpass filter the result. Yep, and now add a noise component. We want to make this noise also last pretty short uh, and high pass it. Make it shorter. Oh yeah, that's a it's pretty piercing, but we're gonna EQ it soon. That's the most we need so far. So I'm gonna close this, and that's our drum kit. Well, I'm gonna call this first one kick. The second one is gonna be snare, and the third one is gonna be hi hat. Okay, we don't need much more. Now let's make a basic, basic uh, arrangement. So this is our kick note. Uh, also the tempo, let's go 140 maybe. Um, no, not 1040, 400, no 1400. Mm, let's sync to beats and just... Okay, we need to shorten the notes because Ardor has a little bit of timing errors and that causes them to glitch out. Actually, I'm going to make these go on every... S on every... S oh, that's swinging. No. Oh, okay. Um, I've placed them on... Yes, that's the pattern I wanted. Now, let's duplicate this a bunch of times. We can hide the unneeded or unused channels right now. Let's, or even uh, deactivate them so they don't use any processing power. And we can hide them too. Oh, well, that's, that's silly. Now let's make the bass really quickly. Um, so let's a MIDI track. What synthesizer should we use? Something I haven't used in a while. Maybe Helm. Actually, I should have called it bass. So what we need, I'm going to just copy the pattern of our drums. We need a bass that... Oh my goodness, that's pretty loud, sorry. We need a bass that plays on like uh, sixteenths. So I'm going to control drag this and we have our 16s. I'm gonna make them a tiny bit shorter so they don't overlap because of the timing errors Ardor has. Mm. Now I want to go to the G note because that's what we tuned our kick to. And that's gonna be the base of our... I'm gonna make this height a little bit quieter. Let's open up Helm. Okay, there is Helm. So now we just need one oscillator. Um, you know what? Let me just assign it to the keyboard so I can play it. Uh, no, not this one. This one. Yeah. That's the note we're playing. It's a bit quiet now if we turn it down. Okay. Now what we need is a filter. Mm, we need uh, the filter envelope. Let's... Also we want sharp attack and fast release. 
or no, the release could be a bit longer, but we need one voice. We don't want any chords to occur. We could maybe use the sub oscillator. Let's try. How about some distortion? Maybe not. Maybe let's keep it relatively clean. Okay, let's see how that sounds. Kind of lame. We know what we're missing. We're missing sidechain compression. Okay, let's use what can we use? We can use calf sidechain compressor. Okay, so first go to pinout, enable the sidechain input, send the kick output here, so the kick drives our sidechain compression. Now we can close this, we need to activate the sidechain so it's actually used inside of the compressor. And uh, now I would actually play this in a loop, so let me select all that, hit right square bracket, press L. I'm gonna put a limiter. We could use X mm, DPL, X42 DPL, a digital peak limiter. It's pretty simple, but. Okay, now I'm feeling the kick, the kick's impact much more because uh, it actually hits harder. So that's the basis of our. Uh, super simple Psytrance track. Now let's move on to making this talking lead instrument. What we're gonna do is record my voice and then forcefully pitch shift it to um, a MIDI track so it will follow a melody. After that we're going to enforce that the voice is quiet whenever the instrument is not playing any notes. And basically we can achieve this with two tracks and two plugins. So first we need an audio track to record our voice. Second, we need a MIDI track to store our um, notes. And now, I'm gonna call this the talking lead MIDI. Now, this is not going to be using any vocoders, and this is gonna be the talking lead voice. Now, let's record uh, some nonsensical voice lines. Okay, let's just... Perfect! Can we hear that? Now, the important thing is that we maintain a stable-ish pitch so that it can be tracked and corrected with our plugin. Now, I'm intentionally going up and down because that's going to give us us different, give us a changing timbre as the sound uh, continues. Now we need some MIDI data to play with. So uh, let's just, I don't know, go and play a... Okay, let's just use this and repeat it twice. That's a, oh wow, it doesn't actually, okay, didn't snap properly. Oh, cause I'm aligning to timecode frames again, not to bars or beats or whatever. That's not super great. Oh, the same happens to my baseline. 
Okay, now what we need instead of this general MIDI instrument is some synthesizer tone. I'm going to use Helm again. And what I want is um, something that has... Basically, we're going to sample... We're going to take the MIDI data to set the pitch, but we're also going to need the audio to sample uh, the volume of envelope and impose it onto our recorded voice. And we're going to do that with a sidechain gate. So I want a um, pretty high pitch and I think a square wave is going to be best because it's, it's like it's peaking for the most time and it's going to help the peak detection of the sidechain envelope be very consistent and clean. And I just need one oscillator, no need for two. And uh, yep, that seems good. Now we don't want to listen to that because it's going to be painful to the ear, so I'm going to make it very, very quiet. I think we actually could maybe turn it down a little bit, just 24 semitones, like two octaves, it's going to be enough. Okay, we're not going to actually listen to that, we can mute it. Now what we need is the first very important plugin, which is Autotune. Now this is a plugin by X42, and it's called X42 Autotune. And uh, what it does, we can scale the user interface up so it's a bit bigger and easier to see, if you're watching this on a phone, for example. Uh, so uh, what this does is um, helps correct pitch, but you can also force it to take input from MIDI. So you can use the pinout and you can see it already uh, prepared a MIDI connection for us and the sidechain accepts MIDI. You can see this purple pin. So now we can just select our talking lead MIDI and we already have the MIDI input connected so that when I now play, you can see that Autotune receives the notes and activates them here. Now, if we were to play a chord, for example, let's give it two notes. Also, I'm going to move it here and uh, make it stay on top. Oh, so the, the, the graphic user interface scaling just turned off. Now, if we play two notes, it's going to activate two notes and it's going to pick the closest one to what it detects. So it's not going to play a chord, it's going to give us alternatives. But we don't want that. Okay, so now we can just listen to the voice. Well, it doesn't sound particularly good yet. So what we can do is change the, um, the filter um, and make it fast so that so that it doesn't really sound natural, but we're not going for a natural sound. We're going to for a robotic instrument. Okay, so what we want is pretty much done in here. Now we need another plugin. We need to impose the envelope. So I'm going to add a LSP sidechain gate. And it might be stereo. Actually, it could be mono because we are dealing with a mono signal so far. Let's move it up and uh, let's open pin connections. And you see we have the first input and we have the sidechain input. Let's activate the sidechain and we have a blue pin here, which means we are connecting audio. Let's click here and select talking lead MIDI. Now it's called MIDI, but it outputs audio from the end because we have a synthesizer in there. And that's why we can take the audio output of that synthesizer and plug it in here. Now let's go here and see what it what it looks like on the talking MIDI track. So we have the synthesizer, we're sending the MIDI signal to the autotune plugin, then we're sending the audio signal to the sidechain gate, and then there's the fader. That means our muting it here is going to mute it after these sends have already occurred, which is perfect because we don't really want to hear this 
but we still want the sidechain um, gate to receive the full level signal. So this is LSP sidechain gate. It's a very powerful plugin, as all LSP plugins are. It can be a bit overwhelming when you look at it first. The first thing we need to do is change the type from internal to external, which basically means now we're going to use the sidechain input. And you can see our value is going up here, and you can see we have these pulses that represent where the nodes hit. Now what we need to do is tweak the settings. So first thing I want to draw the reduction way down so that when it mutes, it mutes completely our voice. Another thing that isn't right is the attack and release times. And we can see there here, the attack is 20 milliseconds and the release is 100 milliseconds, which is very long for this purpose. So I'm going to first make them the slowest or the fastest they can be, which is zero. And we're going to listen to the result and see if it fits our needs. Now, what we can hear also is that the um, the voice underneath is very quiet. So, and the problem is that the, vel the volume varies across the recording and we are like imposing our own vel volume envelope. So we want the volume to be very consistent except for what we impose with the sidechain gate. So let's use a compressor to even out the volume before we sidechain it. We can use a sidechain, a, sorry, a calf compressor plugin. I'm inserting it right before. Actually, this is the stereo version. Let's use the mono version just for consistency. Calf mono compressor. Okay, there it is. And now let's uh, just squash this signal. Let's g bring the input gain all the way up, bring the ratio all the way to infinity and the threshold about zero. Now let's make the attack and release around like maybe 20, 20. Okay, it's starting to sound like what we want. Now I think we need to tweak the sidechain gate a bit. Mm. Now I want to um, move the threshold up so we are activating really only when we are hitting that impulse. Also, there is this zone setting, which give us potentially a wider dynamic range so that if we now go to this Helm instance and actually use a, uh, make the sustain zero, for example, give it some decay. Now just our notes are very short. If I make this note longer, we're gonna hear that, I guess. Yes. So that now allows us to have uh, an actual volume modulation imposed. We are first like smashing this input signal with a compressor to level the volume completely so it's very consistent. And now we're imposing our own volume envelope uh, with this sidechain gate. I'm gonna make it stay on top. And we can also play around and probably use an LFO. So let's uh, maybe use this mono LFO to modulate the volume of the oscillator. Now let's see what that, that makes. Let's close this. Okay, it seems it's frozen. Good news, it has some recovery data. Maybe we are not completely screwed. It's pretty much the way we left it. Just the first region is bugged out and it disappeared. What I do is copy it from a different copy and add an A or another letter to the name because that prevents it from happening again. I don't know, this is a long-standing bug. I've been reporting this years ago. Alrighty, let's listen to our instrument. I'm gonna turn it down a bit. Now, the thing is, um, our material doesn't extend. Okay, 
So you can just copy something. There's no pain in actually doing some really weird vocal chops in there. Actually, I would recommend it. You can totally mess up with that stuff. Like, it's it's really fun, and you can get some really interesting results if you just play around and uh, edit this underlying vocal. <laughs> Now I have a hard time hearing the actual melody and I am not sure if it's imposed correctly. What we can do is maybe duplicate that MIDI track and give ourselves another instance of Helm and make an instrument that we can actually l hear playing. Uh, let's move this above the fader. Okay, maybe my performance isn't ideal, and because I'm changing the pitch a lot, it might be confusing the autotune plugin so that it can't really follow very close. So I'm going to try and give my give a different performance and let's see how that works. I'm going to create a new playlist, which is like saving that take and having a new empty slot that I can fill with a different take and see how it can work out. Am I using the right input? I'm using the right input, okay. I Okay, now I was holding a steady note to give it the best chance of following the pitch very closely. You can tell it sounds much better now. It actually, you can actually read the melody. However, I've started a bit too late. So let's correct that. Also, I... You know what? I think I want to change the this Helm instance and instead of like, give us full sustain. But uh, up the speed of this uh, LFO. And see what can it do. Okay, does it, does it actually modulate the, vol the volume of that? Or did I somehow not do that? Uh, okay, let's maybe make it slower and less pronounced. You can also move, make it quieter. Let's play. Ah, okay, now it, uh, <laughs> now it makes our voice completely gone when it's quiet. Okay, I think this we should actually refrain from using the this LFO. I'm going to disconnect it and just leave the volume as it is. Okay, this is our line. Now we can uh, have some fun and uh, the first thing, let's add some effects so it doesn't sound so dry and and empty. Let's maybe. Let's uh, use the pin connections. Now, I don't want to switch this track from... Um, let's just add another audio output and route this in. And we have a stereo signal now. So we're splitting our mono to stereo. So we can have nice stereo reverb. Now let's play with it a bit. And uh, maybe not make, maybe make it else as huge and... Uh, some high pass. Now, a very fun thing I also do is include a pitch shifter before the auto tune and automate it to make the auto tune interpret my input vocal differently. And for that, I like to use sometimes MA pitch shifter or MA pitch shift, sorry. So let's move it up before autotune 
And now let's open up the automation. MA pitch shift and ratio. Let's make this play. So we can start off with one, which is neutral. Now let's ramp it up. So you see, we can do some weird stuff now. Because you see, Autotune is going to try and uh, snap the detected signals pitch to the pitch you give it, but it's going to do so in the closest octave. It's not going to move more than one octave. So by shifting the input in octaves, we're forcing the output to also shift in octaves, but it's going to try and compensate so we can do some lousy movement here and not really fit the, the pitch, but it's going to snap to the good pitch, but it's also going to uh, jump up and down between octaves. And also the artifacts that MA Pitch Shift is giving us, which are significant, it's not the cleanest pitch shifter in the world, but I like it for that. Uh, they can give you some really interesting results. So we can have some fun and make a pitch automation curve. Okay, it seems that sometimes uh, Autotune can't just uh, keep up with the pitch changes. So I'm going to try and make this a bit more blocky. What if we make a pretty slow ramp here? Okay, so we're just snapping in the middle. So let's snap it. And we can snap back. Or go even lower. And then go back to the default-ish pitch. Let's maybe make the second note higher. And uh, I can also play with these. Okay, uh, when we do so quick, such quick ramps, it can't keep up, and it's uh, lamp landing with the pitch somewhere in the middle, which isn't mm, what we want. Okay, that's that's a bit bit huge pitch. As well. How about starting higher with this one and then going low after maybe like uh, eighth note? Alrighty, that's starting to be pretty funky. Now let's add the sidechain compression, the same we have with the bass. We could just create a sidechain bus and route them all in, but I want to have like fine-grained control. I want to be able to tune, to tweak the attack and release times and make sure they sound right for this particular instrument. What sounds right for the bass might not sound right for this vocal lead. So I'm reassigning the kick as sidechain input. All the settings are the same because this was copied. <laughs> I think it's starting to sound pretty psychedelic. Now what we could also do is add a little bit of, of delay. Let's use Call Vintage Delay because it snaps to, it uh, syncs to BPM and it sounds pretty nice. Uh, we could reduce the width a bit. And of course we could make it before the side chain. Now the whole vocal instrument is a bit too loud, so I'm going to turn it down. And that's how you do it, basically. That's that's it. Uh, we can also have some fun, you know, and record some weird parts like... Oh, it's a bit too late to do that. Sorry. And insert that as well. 
as our pitch shifting experiments. I could do the same singing a low note. Uh... Now the high note was much louder, so I'm going to up the gain of the region. <clears throat> See what we can do with here. Mm, yeah, maybe just for these two notes. Actually, we could like have this low note recorded, but up it with the pitch shifter. So it's gonna give us a different timbre, not necessarily different pitch, but we can use it here maybe. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna maybe replace some high notes for that. It doesn't doesn't sound to be very clean. Uh... Trying some weird sounds. Um, uh, let's see, maybe use it uh, here. Yeah. Okay, they had some problems with pit grabbing the pitch in the first one, so I'm going to maybe, um, yeah, let's hear it again. Does it work now? Yeah, it's better. Uh, let's cut it right after this so it can, like, reanalyze. No, I think it's a bit too... I think the recording is a bit not clean enough. Let's try it again. Maybe that's going to be easier to track the pitch of. Nice. I have one more idea. And that is the sound of brass. Ass. Ass. Kind of weird. Not sure what to make of this. What if we listen to that alone? Oh, we need to um, mute our LSP sidechain. Okay, another thing we can do is pitch shift the actual audio material. I'm gonna pitch shift this one octave and preserve formants. Let's see what it sounds like. Pretty weird. Uh, maybe that's gonna be great. I don't know. Let's see how Autotune deals with it. Ah, oh, we need to re-enable our sidechain gate because... Okay, it doesn't sound like it's a stable pitch. And uh, what else can we do? Oh, I know. We have this. I don't know what this is uh, from, but we can record it. Okay, let's see if we can get a stable pitch from that, at least for the moment. Uh, let's mute this sidechain gate. Oh, perfect. Sounds like a flute. Awesome. Nice. And this? Okay. Let's try and use it for a lower note. Or use it for a higher note, but lower it in post. And we can lower it with the pitch shifter. Mm. I'd like to insert a point here. Uh, okay, let's go like half the pitch, so one octave down. That's interesting. Let's solo this instrumental, listen. Oh, we didn't enable our sidechain gate. Let's try again with it. Uh, I think we should back that off right there. Okay, uh, we could trash all that or just mute it and keep it for later. Maybe we're going to use it. Um, the volume is kind of shaky, but we have this insane compressor just smashing everything. Uh, 
We have delicate clicks, but this is actually what I like. Uh, we remember we have this attack and release at absolute zero. <laughs> and if we change this detection method to peak, it's so fast that we are actually imposing the amplitude of the oscillations of that. Uh, so we are actually like uh, doing ring modulation <laughs> with this. It's pretty insane. What if we really increase the release a tiny bit? Yeah, this way we can have it even more clicky uh, and just something like 0 0.06 millisecond of release already uh, like allows us to make the volume amplitude, the detected volume amplitude stay consistent when it's jumping between peaks. Uh, and that's because we made this pitch so high. You know, if, if I play this. Now if we, oh, sorry, select all these notes and move them three octaves down. I'm pretty sure it's gonna sound different. Or will it? Let's move it another two octaves down. I think we kind of can hear it. No, not really. I know why we can't hear it. Because I'm using a square wave. That's why. If I use this sine wave, that will make it different. Let's experiment. Let's try that. Let's change this oscillator to a sine wave. Now, that proves my point that using square waves for the sidechain gate trigger is a good idea because it gives you much cleaner results with very little like sloppiness, so we can have a very snappy gating. Now, probably we could just generate DC, direct current, so don't have like oscillating waveform, just have a waveform that goes up and stays up. But we can't actually do this with Helm. But we don't need to. Just use a square wave. Okay, with this time and this pitch, it doesn't sound clean at all. Let's move it up. Back up and now. Oh, wait, it's not clean at all. What the hell? <laughs> okay, looks like that's. <laughs> oh, okay, looks like it doesn't really make a big difference if I'm using a square wave or a side wave. Just the fact that I'm having a little bit of release makes it work. Okay, uh. I have a stuck note. That's all for today. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something interesting. Uh, I wanted to make this video for a long time, but I just have so many ideas and topics and um, so little time to make them all real that it often takes years to just sit down and make the video you wanted to make because there's many of them. Um, yeah, so um, big thanks for watching and also huge thanks to all the people who support this channel with their money. Uh, if you, dear viewer, would like to join them and help keep this show going, please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa. Now go record some weird vocals and make some psychedelic music. Bye. Oh, 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 oh